Another amazing new feature in Cubase's 3.3 is the MIDI Learn MCU and Huey support. This means that now we can control Cubase's using a control surface, like what I have here. And not only we can control Cubase's, but we have many options, many different options to control Cubase's, the plugins, the instruments that we run in Cubase's depending on our workflow. So let me show you. I have a control surface right here, and I'm going to use this control surface to control Cubase's using the new MIDI Learn mode. The great thing is it's super simple to use this function. Let me show you how you do it. We go Setup, then MIDI, and then you will see we have a new entry called MIDI Learn. So all we need to do is activate this and then hit Learn. And once we do this, you will see that we have highlighted all the different things that we can assign for Cubase's. So now all I need to do is select a function, let's say, for example, play, and then assign it to any control on my control surface. For example, I'm going to hit this play button right here. And now this is assigned to my play button. If I want to assign the record button, I assign this right here, and maybe I want to assign these ones as well. Fantastic. Now, let's say, for example, that I also want to assign the zoom in and zoom out functions. I can go here. Okay, see, zoom in. And here, zoom out. And not only that, this can be assigned to pretty much anything I want. If I open the mixer, I might want to assign this one to my first fader here, this one to my second fader, my third fader. I can assign the panning if I want to like that. And then when I'm done, I can hit Exit MIDI Learn and I'm good to go. Now, if I hit play, I can start playing my project. I can zoom in and out on my channels and pretty much anything that I want to assign, I can do this in this way. Now, there's even more to this. It gets even more convenient because if you want, you can start creating presets for your control surfaces. For example, I can go here, and create a new preset and give it the name of my controller. And now once I start assigning functions, this will be saved and retained for that specific controller, which is great. Another very important function when you're using MIDI Learn is that you can use a selected track mode. What that means is that when you start assigning things to a specific track, these will be applied to whichever track you have selected. So for example, if I want to assign my fader here to this channel and my panning here, that means that once I exit MIDI Learn, I can of course control this track, but if I go, for example, to the next track, I can control the next track as well. Same thing with the panning. So that's really, really cool. And that also applies to other things like, for example, plugins. If I go to my Studio EQ, okay, and let's say we want to go back to MIDI Learn, I can say that I want to reserve these four faders to control my studio EQ. For example, I can go to my high frequencies here, assign it there, high mids, low mids, and my low frequencies here. And then let's say I want to assign the frequency for every band with these knobs. Number one, band three, band two, and band one. So now as you can see, I can control the bands here for my EQ. That's really nice and satisfying. But if I go to another track and open the studio EQ, I can still control this specific track because I was doing the MIDI learning with selected track mode. Okay, so that's very convenient, very, very powerful feature, and it makes assigning things to a control surface a breeze. Here I have another example of a device that can be used as a MIDI controller for Cubase's 3.3 with the MIDI Learn function. This is a synthesizer, and as you can see, if I go to Setup, Presets, I have created a specific preset for the Yamaha Reface ES, just the way I showed you right now, and this controls Microlog. So I assign parameters from Microlog to the controls of the Yamaha Reface CS. So for example, I can go here, 
turn up my oscillator 1 volume, oscillator 2 volume, and then I can also change the course. Filter, resonance, and then I can activate my envelope as well. If I go here, So basically, now I have hands-on control of the synthesizers and the plugins that makes me happy. Now, if that wasn't enough, Cubasis 3.3 now offers MCU and Huey support, which means that if your control surface can work in MCU or Huey mode, you're pretty much covered. Let me show you how it works. My control surface here is set to MCU mode and specifically for Cubase. So what I can do here is go Setup, Activate Mackie Control Huey, and now I can select the ports for Mackie and Huey. And in my case, I'm going to select my mix face. And as you can see, now these ports are assigned for Mackie Control. Now all I need to do is close this and I'm good to go. So now if I hit play, I can use my jog wheel to navigate across the project. I can do channel selections like this. And of course, if I open the mixer, I can start mixing my project. I have my panning here. I can do mutes, solo, record enable a channel. And this is fantastic because with Mackie or Huey, everything is pre-mapped already, so you don't have to do any mappings. And the best part of it is you can have two different devices, like what I have here, use one in MCU mode, for example, and use the other one for MIDI Learn. And then you can get the best of both worlds. You can have the MCU support for all the basic stuff like the transport, controlling your mixer and all these things. And then you can use another device to do MIDI learning and control more specific things, maybe synthesizers, maybe plugins. So with MIDI Learn, MCU and QE support, the possibilities for controlling QBases are now pretty much endless.